everybody. For this week, we will be doing questions from numbers or number systems or number theory, however you choose to call it. Let's get to individual questions. Question number one. Find the sum of all possible distinct remainders which are obtained when cubes of prime numbers are divided by six. Now see, for prime numbers, we know all the, one faulty line that people think of is all prime numbers can be written as 6n plus minus 1 or 6n minus 1, 6n plus 1 or 6n minus 1. But this is for all prime numbers apart from 2 and 3. This is for all prime numbers apart from 2 and 3. So when they're asking me for some of all possible distinct remainders which are obtained when cubes of prime numbers are divided by 6, we need to treat 2 and 3 separately. And then for these two, we can perhaps use an algebraic expression. So 2 cube, 8 upon division by 6 gives me a remainder of 2. Similarly, 27 upon division by 6 gives me a remainder of 3. Now 6n plus 1, 6n minus 1. You can do it algebraically. Or what you can do is simply use a one precise number of these types because remainder in either case, remainder in either case is always going to be identical. So you can take up 7 here and you can take up 5 here and your work will be identical. So for 5 cube, you get 125 by 6. The remainder is going to be uh, 5 and then 343 by 6. So 342 is divisible by 6. So here you will get the remainder as 1. And altogether, 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 1, the answer to this particular question will be option B, 11. Okay, next, a three-digit number N leaves the same remainder upon dividing 68488 and 67516. How many possible values does N have? Now, this needs to be understood using a number line. Think of it this way. Most of us would be familiar with the line that multiplication is nothing but repeated addition. The inverse of this is division is nothing but repeated subtraction. And that is how this line will be useful. See, 6, 8, 4, 8, 8. And the other number is 6, 7, 516. Now, if there is going to be a number that upon dividing either of these leaves the same remainder, can you see? It can happen in two ways. Let's say that a number starts off at zero, takes a jump here, takes a jump here, takes a jump here, takes a jump here, then you are left with this remainder. Let's call this remainder k. The spots where it lands at are the multiples of that jump n and it keeps on going takes a jump here takes a jump here takes a jump here and you are again left with the remainder k here it has to be the same remainder in either case now this is one way of looking at it the other way of looking at it diagrammatically would be like this Let's look at 6, 7, 5, 1, 6, and 6, 8, 4, 8, 8. If remainder k is to be left, in either case, can I see that from here to here to here, I keep on going. The jumps taken in, in reverse are like this. And in either case, k is left. In either case, the same remainder k is left. Which is to say, the difference between these two numbers, the difference between these two numbers should be covered, should be covered in some jumps of the number with which we are dividing. Now, what is the largest possible jump size with which I can cover this entire distance? the largest possible jump size with which I can cover this entire distance, it is simply the difference. The difference of these two numbers is 6, 8, 4, 8, 8 minus 6, 7, 
five one six gives me two gives me seven gives me nine gives me zero and gives me zero again so the difference between these two numbers is nine seventy two so you nine seventy two a different variation of the question would be what is the largest number that upon dividing six eight four eight eight and six seven five one six leaves the same remainder the largest such number is nine seventy two but the question is not asking for the largest such number. The question is asking for a three-digit number. So not just 972. All factors of 972 that are three-digit numbers are to be recorded. So we go ahead. We write 1 into 972. Then we have 2 into 4. 1, 7 is 8. 1, 2, 6. 2 into 4, 8, 2, 6. Then we have 3 into how many? 3, 2, 4. Then we have 4 into 243. Okay. 5 doesn't work. 6 works. 6 into 150 plus 12. So 162. 7 doesn't work. 8 doesn't work. 9. 9 into 108, 10 doesn't work, 11 doesn't work, 12 works. We get 12 into 81. In order to complete this entire list of factor generation, in, in order to complete this entire list of factor generation, I can go even further. But remember, we needed only three digit numbers. As soon as we have arrived at the case, where it is 12 into 81, both of these are two digit numbers. As this number goes up, this number will go down. The same relationship has also happened for the initial set of six pairs that we have identified. One has gone up, 972 has gone down, two has gone up, 486 has gone down, three has gone up, 324 has gone down, four has gone up, 243 has gone down, so on and so forth. So now I know that both these numbers that will get generated henceforth, both these numbers that will get generated henceforth, they will necessarily be two digit numbers they will necessarily be two-digit numbers. They cannot possibly cross the threshold of two-digit numbers. And therefore, at this point, I can mark my answer to the question as six. The six numbers that leave the same remainder upon dividing either of these numbers, three-digit numbers, 972, 486, 324, 243, 162, and 108. If you wanted to complete the list, which is also a skill that you should ideally be working, I should be aware of, so you keep on going. 13 doesn't work. 14 doesn't work. 15 doesn't work. 16 doesn't work. 17 doesn't work. 18 works. 18 into 54. Now, 19 doesn't work. 20 doesn't work. 21 doesn't work. 22 doesn't work. 23 doesn't work. 24 doesn't work. 25 doesn't work. 26 doesn't work. 27 doesn't work. 27 works. So it would have to be 27 into 36, next pairing is 27 into 36. And then we have 28 doesn't work, 29 doesn't work, 30 doesn't work, 31 doesn't work, 32 doesn't work, 33 doesn't work, 34 doesn't work, 35 doesn't work, and we are now listed down to 36. Now we have a comprehensive pairings of numbers that multiply and give me 972. If you also want to find out how many factors does 972 have, the prime factorization method is absolutely fine. This is 2 square into 3 raised to the power 5. So total number of factors. Number of factors will be 3 into 6 or 18. You can see you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pairs identified. 18 factors. You have We have comprehensively listed out all factors and identified the numbers. We can be rest assured our answer is correct. Next question. Find the largest four digit number, which when divided by seven, nine, and 11 gives a remainder of five in each case. Okay. The largest four digit number, which when divided by seven, nine, 11, leaves a remainder of five in each case. The first thing we can do is see if upon division by seven, nine, and 11 leaves a remainder of five in each case. 
when I subtract 5 from that number, it should be a multiple of 7, it should be a multiple of 9, and it should be a multiple of 11, or it should be a multiple of 693. It should be a multiple of 7, a multiple of 9, and a multiple of 11, product of these three numbers, because these three are co-prime, their LCM is as good as their product. 693n plus 5. The numbers that will get generated will be of this nature, 693n plus 5. Now, one way to do it is, the first such number is going to be 5, which is 693 into 0 plus 5. The next such number is 693 into 1 plus 5. Next number is 693 into 2 plus 5. Then next number is 693 into 3 plus 5. Every number in this series is fulfilling the criteria that upon division by 7, 9 and 11, we get a remainder of 5 in each case. And this is 5. But the question, if I go down this path, if I go down this path, getting to the largest 4 digit number is going to be very cumbersome. Getting to the largest four digit number is going to be very cumbersome. So instead, what we should be doing is take the smallest five digit number. The smallest five digit number is 10,000 and divide this by 693. When you divide this by 693, you get 1, 6, 9, 3, then 3, 0, 7, and 0. So it will go four times. 4 into 3 is 2. 1 carried over, 7, and 3 carried over, 2772. 7, 7, 2. 0 minus 2 is 8, 16 minus 7 is 9, 9 minus 7 is 2. So now we know 10,000 is a number which is 693 n plus 298. 10,000 is a number which is 693 n plus 298. But we need a number which is 693 n plus 5. We, we need a number which is 693 n plus 5. So in order to move from here, to move to a 693 n plus 5 kind of number, what do we need to subtract? We need to subtract 293. So let's subtract 293 from here and we will reach 9,707, which is the answer to this question. 9,707 is the largest four digit number, which when divided by seven or nine or 11, leaves a remainder of five in each case. Just to be extra certain, what you can also do is, you can check 9702. You can divide it by uh, any of, the, you can divide it by 7 or 9 or 11 and C. In each case, you will get an integral result. That is the entirety of this question. Oh, okay, next question. Now, this is an interesting one. Sum of all the factors of 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. How many times on one? It is confusing. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 ones we have. So on a cursory glance, the first thing you can potentially see, the first thing you can potentially see is these, this number is divisible by 11. So if I divide it by 11, I will get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And 0, 1. This much we will get. Okay. Now that we look at it, now that we look at it, hopefully we can also see 11 into 1, 0, 1. First three one zero ones followed by four zeros plus 1, 0, 1. You have got this. Both these numbers are multiples of 1, 0, 1. So I can take 101 out common as well. So I'll have 11 into 101 into 10,001. I'll have 11 into 101 into 10,001. Okay. Now that we have this, now it is a very arcane piece of information. If you know it, it's great. If you don't know it, this should be the question that helps you learn. 
10,001 is not a prime number. 10,001 is 137 into 73. This leads us to 10,001. So now I can break this down as 11 into 37. Sorry, into, sorry, not 37. The smallest number I write first. Well, into 73 into 101 into 137. And now we need sum of all factors. We have been success. We have successfully been able to break this down into this. We have successfully been able to break this down into this. Oh. Now I'm expecting all of us know how to calculate the sum of factors. Either you know the formula or you know how that expression comes into being. And therefore, this next term that I'm writing is not too difficult for us to fathom. Sum of factors will be given by this expression. 1 plus 137. Now, my challenge is, of course, because I'm not using a calculator right now, this is going to be difficult to calculate. But if I had a calculator uh, handy, if I had a calculator nearby, or if I were using a calculator, the working is simple. Remember, whenever the question is, as in cat questions in general, they're not dependent on your ability to calculate, they're dependent on your ability to understand. See, this question doesn't break it down whether you know how to multiply these numbers. The question breaks down on whether you know 10,001 is 137 into 72. If you know this, then you can break this down. Then this expression can be created. Once this expression is created, you can work your way forward. But in the absence of that, it remains challenging. So I will try to do the math. 12 into 74. So 740 plus 148 adds up to 888. Okay. So these two numbers multiply to give me 888. And here I get 13800, 102, 102 into 138 I have to do. So 138 into 100 and 138 into 2, 138 into 2 will get me to 274. Yes. But how can it be to 276? Okay. 276. We add this up, we get 6. We get 7. We get to zero, we get four, and we get one. So these numbers multiply to give me one four zero seven six. A three digit number is multiplying with a five digit number. So my response will either be an eight digit number or my response will be a seven digit number. This is very, very painful, but because that is the work, we do it. Now we multiply this by eight, eight, eight. The good thing is, as soon as I have the first line, the subsequent lines are also generated. 6 into 8 gives me 8. 4 carried over. 0. 6 carried over. 6. 2. 3 carried over. So, 1, 1. Now, again, 8, 0, 6, 2, 1, 1. Cross, cross. 8, 0, 6, 2, 1, 1. Now we have to add all of this up. We get 8 here. We get 8 here. We get 4 here. We get 9 here. We get 9 here. We get 4 here. We get 2 here. And we get 1 here. The entire product finally is 1, 2, 4, 9, 9. 4, 8, 8. This is the answer. But again, if it was in a CAT exam, if it was in the CAT exam, then I would most likely use a calculator. I wouldn't trust myself or at least devote this much time in order to engage in the multiplication. Hopefully, this new point of 10,001 is given by the result of 137 into 73 is something that we will learn. Okay. Next question. In how many ways can 152100 be expressed as product of two different factors? Okay. This is a fairly simple one. First thing, let's just uh, establish the baseline how this is done. Let's say the number given to us was 42. 
in how many ways can 42 be expressed as product of two different factors? So if I did one into 42, and sorry, what is this here? Two into 21, and three into 14, and six into seven, all the different ways, all the different ways in which 42 can be written as product of two different factors have been established. All the different ways in which 42 can be written as product of two different factors has been established, which is nothing more than, can you see, we've got all total number of factors here, all total number of factors here divided by two in order to make, break them down into pairs. We have this given to us. Now the only variation here that you have to take care of is the number should not be a perfect square because let's say if we had 36, let's say if we had 36. For 42, the standard way that we calculate our total number of factors is this. We write 42 in the prime factorized form, 2 into 3 into 7. So total number of factors given by 2 into 2 into 2, which is equal to 8. We have total number of factors as 8, so we'll get 4 pairs. But the storyline changes if the total number that we're dealing with is 36. If the number that we're dealing with is 36, it is a perfect square, then the storyline would change because see what would happen. This is 2 square into 3 square. So total number of factors will be 3 into 3, 9. But this is not ideal. Because this, I cannot break down into two pairs. No? This, I cannot, this, I cannot break down every factor into a pair. Here, what would happen is 1 into 36, 2 into 18, 3 into 12, 4 into 9. And finally, 6 into 6. This pair will get eliminated from consideration for this wording because it has to be expressed as product of two different factors. If it was to be expressed as product of two, two numbers, then I would have five pairs. If it is two different numbers, then it is four pairs. This is the only variation that needs to be taken, you know, taken care of. Now, if we have to solve it for this number, I've done it for two smaller numbers just to establish the baseline. If I have to do it for 152100, zero, I have to check if 1521 one, if 1521 one is a perfect square. First thing I know is 1521 one into 2 square into 5 square. Now I can happily break 100, the last two zeros into 2 square into 5 square, no challenge at all. Now this 1521, one, I have to do the prime factorization. I see it is divisible by 9. I see 1, 5, 2, 1 is divisible by 9. So I break it down as 3 square into 2 square into 5 square. Finally, if I divide it by 9, what do I get? 1, 62, so 6, 81, so 9. I get 169. Okay. And now this is 13 square. This is 13 square. So finally, our number can be broken down as 13 square into 3 square into 2 square into 5 square. So total number of factors obtained here, total number of factors obtained here will be 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 or we will have 81 factors and also this number is indeed a perfect square. It is not like 42, it is like 36. Our second example, it is like 36. It is indeed a perfect square. Given that the question was asking me two different factors, given that the question was asking me about two different factors, can we now see when we had nine factors, this last pairing had to be removed. So nine minus one by two led me to four pairs. So for this case, when we have 81 factors, our answer will be obtained as 81 minus 1 by 2, which is 40 pairs. Or the correct answer to this question will be option D. Hopefully this idea of how this has been done is understandable, especially the example with 42. When you have a non-perfect square, it is simply number of factors divided by 2. When it is given to us as a perfect square, then also the question can have two languages. If it says two different factors, then total number of factors minus one divided by two. Or if it says product of two factors, product of two numbers, then it has to be total number of factors plus one divided by two. 
And why that plus one happens or why that minus one happens is because there is going to be a pair in which both the numbers are identical. Whether this pair is allowed or not allowed is told to us by the language. We have to take care of that. Then finally, this number, we break it down, 1, 5, 2, 1, and everything that flows after it. That is fairly straightforward. Hopefully, we learned something. Let's move on. The total number of factors of a natural number n is 45. What is the maximum number of prime numbers by which n can be divided? Okay. Very conceptual. Very nice. Look at this. See, for any number n, how we calculate the total number of factors is given by, we first prime factorize it. We prime factorize it. And then total number of factors is given by a plus 1 into b plus 1 into c plus 1 into d plus 1, so on and so forth. And this has been told to us is equal to 45 in this question. Now, the question is asking maximum number of prime factors, prime numbers, maximum number of prime numbers by which n gets divided, which means... I want A, B, C, D to take non-zero values. If I want A, B, C, D to take non-zero values, A plus 1, B plus 1, C plus 1, D plus 1, whatever brackets we are getting on the LHS, they should be 2 or higher. If A, B, C, D are taking non-zero values, whatever powers of prime numbers we are working with, they have to take non-zero values, then these brackets have to be two or higher. So, in a, so 45, what is the best case scenario for me to break down 45 into multiple numbers? What is the best case scenario for me to break down 45 into multiple numbers so that maximum number of brackets on the left hand side can be two or higher? I can break down 45 max is three into three into five. I have broken down 45 into prime factors. I have broken 45 in, down into prime factors, 3 into 3 into 5, which would imply one of these variables can take a value of 2, another one of these variables can take a value of 2, another one of these variables can take a value of 4, but beyond that, every other variable, every other A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, however far you go, every other variable will have to take a value of 0, which is to say, at max, three powers can be non-zero. At max, three powers can be non-zero. So what is the maximum number of prime numbers by which n can be divided? The answer to the question is three. Now, this is like when you're solving it for the first time, when this idea strikes you for the first time, then this is how you solve. If you want to reduce the work, like, like we reduce the work for a lot of other places, if you want to simply reduce the work, say for this formation, if you have total number of factors for number, what is the maximum number of what is the maximum number of prime numbers that the original number can be divided by? All you do is write down 45 in its prime factorized form. In its prime factorized form, it is this. In its prime factorized form, it is this. So your answer is 2 plus 1. That's it. Beyond this, all this understanding, this is for the first time, but in the subsequent iterations, let's say total number of factors of a natural number is 48. What is the maximum number of prime numbers it can be divisible by? You should ideally go 2 raised to the power 4 and 3 raised to the power 1. Answer is 5. Answer is 5. And you can potentially create that number here. C. Uh, let's call that number A. A is 2 square into 3 into 5, into 7, into 11. Check this number. This will indeed have 48 factors. This is the maximum number of prime numbers that n can be divided by. In case you want to turn it around and say, what is the minimum number of prime numbers that n can be divided by? It is simple. Minimum number of factors will always be 1. You can always have a as a prime number raised to, let's say, if you were working with 48, prime number raised to the power 47. A will, every number is always divisible by at least one prime number. 
the maximum number of prime numbers it can be divided by is given by total number of factors. You prime factorize it, and whatever is the summation of their powers, you get that as your answer for such questions. I don't know if all the ideas are becoming clearer or not, but hopefully you are learning something because this is the way a number system is so logically, intricately linked with everything else. Okay, next. Y is an even natural number satisfying y is greater than equal to 4. x is equal to y square plus 2 by. The largest natural number that always divides x square minus 8x is. Okay. Let's do some magic. First thing we will do is we have to break this down. So this is as good as x into x minus 8. Cool. Now we also know x can be broken down this way. Now, because we know y is an even natural number satisfying that y is greater than or equal to 4. See, I don't really care for y is greater than or equal to 4. It's not like as soon as uh, as soon as y crosses the threshold of 4, it somehow achieves magical properties. The only, There is no magical properties being achieved by y after it crosses the threshold of 4. I'm simply saying y is as good as 2k. Y is as good as 2k, where k is a natural number. Y is an even natural number, k is a na natural number. So, we had simplified x square minus 8x into this. Now, I will replace x with y. So, I will get y square plus 2y and y square plus 2y minus 8. Wonderful thing. I can break this down even further. I can break this down even further. Now, see y square plus 2y, I can take out y common, I'm left with y plus 2. And now, here I've got y square plus 2y minus 8. Mm, so, y square plus 4y minus 2y minus 8 or y, y plus 2. And here I will have y taken out common, minus 2 taken out common, y minus 2 and y plus 4. y, y plus 2, y minus 2 and y plus 4. Okay. Now y is an even natural number. Because y is an even natural number, I can replace y with 2k. So I will have 2k. 2k plus 2, 2k minus 2, and 2k plus 4. From each of these terms, I can take 2 out common. I will have 16 times of k. In fact, I will write it in a specific way. See, when I take out 2 common from this bracket, I will have k minus 1 left. Then I will have a k left, then I will have a k plus 1 left, and I will have a k plus 2 left. See, these are four consecutive natural numbers. These are four consecutive natural numbers. Yeah, that these are four consecutive natural numbers. Product of four consecutive natural, product of n consecutive natural numbers is always divisible by this result also you should know product of n consecutive natural numbers product of n consecutive natural numbers is always divisible by n factorial so, k minus 1k. We have four consecutive natural numbers. It has to always be divisible by 24. Four factorial is 24. So, the largest natural number that always divides x square minus 8x is 16 into 24 or 384. Or 384. Okay. We can also perhaps, let's say if you had not replaced y with 2k, 
you could also have arrived at this without having used this product of n consecutive natural numbers is visible by n factorial. Without this, we would have gotten, oops, so too much is erased. Let me bring it again. Okay. Yeah. We would have this. We would have this expression. So I'm rearranging the terms to bring it back to y minus 2 y plus, sorry, y, then y plus 2 and y plus 4. Given these are four consecutive even numbers, given these are four consecutive even numbers, can I say there will be, each of these terms will be divisible by 2. Given these are four consecutive natural numbers, given these are four consecutive natural numbers, I can say out of these four consecutive natural numbers, I will have two numbers which are divisible by two. Exactly two numbers that are divisible by exactly two. I will have one number divisible by exactly four and I will have one number divisible by exactly eight. Any set of four consecutive even numbers you pick up, any set of four consecutive even numbers you pick up, let's say I pick up 28, 30, 32, and 34. These are the two numbers that are divisible by exactly two. This is the number that is divisible by exactly four. And this is the number divisible by exactly eight. Any set of four consecutive even numbers, this working is always there. So what is the highest power of two involved? What is the highest power of two involved? I can state, I get two square from here. I get two square from here. I get two cube from here or all together, I can say the product will definitely always be divisible by two raised to the power seven. The product will always definitely be divisible by two raised to the power seven. Additionally, because we are taking pretty much four consecutive even numbers, there is definitely going to be at least one multiple of three. There is at least going to be one multiple of three. So our final result has to be divisible by two raised to the power seven into three or 128 into 3 or 384. But this is very, very observational. This is very, very observational. And if you can see it, great. If you can't see it, then you can perhaps use the earlier insight. Sum of n consecutive natural numbers is always divisible by n factorial. In either case, your answer that you will reach will be 384. Okay. Next question. Find the sum of all the co-primes to 2016, which are less than 2016. Okay. This is an amazing question. Look at this. If I have this number, sum of all the co-primes to 2016, which are less than 2016. Can I say A plus B equal to 2016? A plus B is equal to 2016. First, uh, I hope we know how to calculate. First, we know how to calculate how many co-primes to 2016 are under 2016. We know how to calculate that. 2016, I can break it down as 2 into 1008 or 2 into 8 into 126. 16. So 2 raised to the power 5 into 3 square into 7. This is the number that we are dealing with. 2 raised to the power 5 into 3 square into 7. 2 raised to the power 5 into 3 square into 7. This is the number. Now, finding out um, sum of number of co-primes, number of co-primes, not sum right now, number of co-primes under 2016. Number of co-primes under 2016, it will be given by 2016. See, because it is divisible by 2, 
all the numbers divisible by two, all the numbers divisible by two will not be co-prime to 2016. So how many numbers will not be divisible by two? Half of them. Half of them. So how many? 2016 is divisible by 3 also. So how many numbers will not be divisible by 3? It will be 2 thirds of the number. Now, uh, all the numbers, uh, oh, sorry, 2016 is divisible by 7. So we have to remove all numbers that are multiples of 7. How many of them are not multiples of 7? It is 6 by 7. So we have got this. We can get rid of this, we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this. This, when I divide it by 7, I get 2. 61 gives me 8. 56 gives me 8. So 288 into 2. 288 into 2 is 576. There are 576 numbers. There are 576 numbers which are co prime to 2016 and are under 2016. This is also the Euler-based way of finding different number of remainders. This is Euler number that we are finding for 2016. I am not going into Euler number because that is an entire different saga altogether. But this is finding how many co-primes are there under 2016, which are co-prime to 2016. Okay. Now, once you arrived at this 576, the next thought is so beautiful. Can you see? If I put 1 here, the other number here that will go is 2015. The other numbers that will go here is 2015. Can you see 1 and 2015 are both co-prime to 2016? The 576 co-prime numbers that we have identified, the 576 co-prime numbers that we have identified, will get generated in pairs only. Will get generated in pairs only. If the first number is 1, the other number has to be 2015. See, because if the first number is 2, if this number is not co-prime to 2016, the first number is not co-prime to 2016, the second number also cannot be co-prime. The second number will also not be co-prime to 2016. So when 576 co-prime numbers have been identified, it can only be done in a manner that the two of them together, out of these 576 numbers, there will exist a pair of each of them that adds up to 2016. There will always exist a pair of them that adds up to 2016. Even if I pick up stuff like 1007 and 1009, these two numbers add up to 2016. Both of them are indeed co-prime to 2016. So now when they've asked me, sum of all co-primes to 2016, which are less than 2016, the working that we have to do is 576 divided into pairs. Happily will be 288. There are 288 pairs and each pair adds up to 2016. So we have to do 2016 into 288. This is the working that we have to engage in. This is the working that we have to engage in. Now you can quickly answer. Hopefully you can quickly answer. The answer has to be option D. The answer. I don't need to engage in maths this time because see, when I have 2016 and 288 multiplying, I know my answer has to be a multiple of 8 and the unit digit has to be 8. My answer has to be a multiple of 8 and the unit digit has to be 8. The unit digit is not 8 here. The unit digit is not 8 here. And this number, because it is ending with 108, this is not a multiple of 8. 608 is indeed a multiple of 8, is also ending with the digit 8. This has to be the answer. Among the available options, only this can be it. But in case we want to do the full multiplication, we will also do that. 6 into 8 gets me 8. 4 carried over. So I get 2. I get 1. I get 1, 6, 1, 2, 8. I will again get 8, 2, 1, 6, 1. And then I will get 2, 3, 8. 0 and 4. So I add it up 8, 0, 6, 0, 8, 5. 5, 8, 0, 6, 0, 8, which is indeed option D. This should be the answer. There are two parts to this. First is identifying how many co-primes will be there under 2016. 
and then their summation idea comes from um, a plus b is equal to 2016 there will always exist a pair that adds up to 2016 if a is co prime b also has to be co prime so number of co primes you've got you break it down into pairs and then every pair gives me a summation of 2016 you multiply it you get your answer next question a 1500 page dictionary was compiled on a computer by Oxford University Press. Just before it went for print, it was spotted that none of the pages were numbered. Find the number of times the typist must press crease from 0 to 9 on the keyboard to number all pages. Essentially, the question is asking me how many digits are used, how many digits are used in order to print till 1500. So, the simplest breakdown we do, single digit numbers, it will be 1 to 9, so 9 numbers, 9 digits, or double digit numbers, pay attention, it goes from 10 to 99, so there are 90 numbers, so 90 into 2, these are double digits, 90 into 2. We will use up 180 digits for triple digit numbers. We will go from 100 to 999. So 900 numbers, 900 numbers and three digits each. So 2700 digits would be used up here. And this is the tricky part. Rest starts with 1000 to 1500. How many numbers here? These are 501 numbers with four digits each. So this will turn to 2004. This will turn to 2004. We have to simply add up these numbers and our answer will be obtained. So nine plus four gives me three, one carried over. So nine, Nothing carried over. So 1 plus 7 gives me 8 and 2 plus 2 gives me 4. The total number of digits used up will be 4893, which should be the answer to this question. Okay. Next question. Let x be the set of integers 9, 15, 21, 27. These numbers are increasing in steps of these numbers are increasing in steps of 6. Okay. Let x be the set of integers, so on and so forth. y denotes a subset of x such that the sum of no two elements of y is 384. Find the maximum number of elements in y. Okay. Wonderful. Let's see. Here, can you see the first term and the last term? 9 and 375. If I work my magic, it will be 15. It will be 6 back. If I go 6 back, I get 369. If I go forward here, and I go back, I will have 363. Just this visual aid should tell you, out of 9 and 375, out of 9 and 375, I can only pick one. I cannot pick both of them. Out of 9 and 375, I can only pick one. I cannot pick two of them because we are told sum of no two elements of y is 384. So between the two of them, one comes through. Similarly, for the next pair, out of these two, I can only pick one. Out of these two numbers, I can only pick one, so on and so forth. And this will keep on going. This will keep on going. The challenge is to identify, the challenge is to identify where exactly does it does this stop? Of course, I don't want to go down the path of writing everything down. I don't want to list it out all the pairs because the numbers are going to be immense. The number of numbers are going to be immense. But in order to identify the middle term, in order to identify the middle term, all I have to do is summation of the first term and the last term divided by 2. First term and last term add up to 384. So half of that is 192. Half of that is 192. Now, if the summation middle term is 192, can you see 192 will not be a part of the series? 192 will not be a part of the series. The series is of numbers which are 6n plus 3. 
or odd numbers. So 192 is not a part of this series. So three back and three forward should get, get you the middle terms. This here will be 189. And this here will be 195. The series will go all the way from 9 to 189. 9 to 189. This is 6 into 1 plus 3. And this is 6 into 31 plus 3. 189 is 6 into 31 plus 3. How many terms are there in this series? It's simply given by coefficient of 6 for each term. 6 into 1 plus 3 and 6 into 31 plus 3. So find the max in every pairing that we have identified. In every pairing that we have identified, we can pick one number out of that. In every pairing that we have identified, we can pick one number out of that. So for 31 pairings, our answer to the question will be 31. Okay, next question now. Let Sx be defined to be x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 4, where x can take any values from 1, 2, 3, all the way up until 8. How many of these sets contain 6 or its multiple? Okay, now the wonderful thing. See, all the numbers in this world can be represented in families of 6. All the numbers in this world can be represented in families of 6. Every number is either 6n plus 1 or 6n plus 2 or 6n plus 3 or 6n plus 4 or 6n plus 5 or 6n. This is what I mean by family of numbers. Every number can be represented in families of 6. Given that we have 5 consecutive numbers here. Given that we have 5 consecutive numbers here. Depending upon whether, let's say if x was 6n plus 1, if x was 6n plus 1, these five numbers, sx here would be 6n plus 1, 6n plus 2, 6n plus 3, 6n plus 4, and 6n plus 5. Do we see a multiple of 5 here? Uh, do we see a multiple of 6 here? Of course not. All of these numbers leave some remainder upon division by 6. So it is not great. What if x was 6n plus 2 kind of number? The first number, the starting number was 6n plus 2 kind of number. Then sx would be 6n plus 2, 6n plus 3, 6n plus 4, 6n plus 5. And lo and behold, we have a multiple of 6 available here. So this is a good set for us. What if x was equal to 6n plus 3 kind of number? Then sx would... Now see, you don't have to write down this entire list. You don't have to write down this entire list. If the first number is 6n plus 3, can you see x plus 3 would be a multiple of 6? And therefore, this is a good number. What if x was equal to 6n plus 4? sx would be equal to... 6n plus 4, and here you would get 6n. x plus 2 itself would be a multiple of 6. So this is a good number. And then for x equal to 6n plus 5, and you get 6n plus 5 and 6n. And finally, for x equal to 6n, no work at all. This is already 6n. Hopefully, you can also see the diagonal sort of work that is happening. So as long as the starting number, as long as the starting number is not a 6n plus 1 kind of number. 6n plus 1 kind of number means a number that upon division by 6 leaves a remainder of 1. As long as the first number is not 6n plus 1 kind of number, you will get a multiple of 6. So simply listing out and can you see out of every six consecutive natural numbers, out of every six consecutive natural numbers, you will get one number of each of these variations. How many complete six of, uh, how many complete groups of six natural numbers do we have? The highest multiple of six under 80 is 78. So for 78, out of every six numbers, five are useful. 78 into five by six. Then the two numbers that are left are 79. 79 is a 6n plus 1 kind of number, not great, but 80 is a good number. Our answer will be this. 
cancel, cancel. 13 into 5 plus 1 or 66. This will be our answer. Or either in the other way we can look at it, the other way we can count it or observe it is I have to remove all 6 and plus 1 kind of numbers. 6 and plus 1 kind of numbers would be 1, 7, 1, 7, 13, 19, 25, 31, 37, 43, 49, 55, 61, 67, 73, and 79. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 numbers. Out of this list of 18 numbers, 14 numbers have to be removed. So how many of these sets contain 6 or each multiple? The answer is option B, 66. Hopefully this family of numbers 6 and plus 1, 6 and plus 1, 6 and plus 2, this representation is something you are familiar with. If not, you should ideally insist or wherever you are learning from you should ask them to teach you about this okay next kn denotes the number of ways in which n can be expressed as a difference of two perfect squares okay which of the following is maximum okay so 110 p square minus q square is equal to 110. I'm just saying how many potential values for p and q I can identify. Okay. Hopefully you can see p square minus q square. The simplest simplification we have is p minus q and p plus q. Now, the wonderful thing is The wonderful thing is, if P minus Q is even, if P minus Q is even, P plus Q also should be even. Or if P minus Q is odd, P plus Q should also be odd. This simply stems from if P and Q both are even. If P and Q both are even, then P minus Q will be even, P plus Q will be even. If P and Q, one of them is odd, one of them is even, then their difference will be odd. Their difference and their summation will be odd. Both of them would be odd. If both of them are odd, their difference will be even, their summation will be even. So in either case, can you see the difference of two perfect squares or this, um, the difference of two perfect squares will either be a multiple of four, either both of these, both of these brackets will be multiples of two, therefore the product will be a multiple of four or it will be an odd number. The product of these two numbers will either be a multiple of 4 or it will be an odd number. The fact that 110 does not fall in either category, 110 does not fall in either category means that 110, which of k of 110 is 0. This work is done. Okay. Let us now see for 105, the next number in the list. 105 does not get eliminated as 110 because it is odd. Okay. So now what we will do is P minus Q into P plus Q. P plus Q has to be equal to 105. Now for 105, 105 is a fairly small number. A fairly small number. Can I break it down? Can I break it down? into pairs of factors 1 into 105 3 into 35 5 into 21 and finally 7 into 15 why we have done this why we have done this is see p minus q and p plus q are factors of 105 p minus q and p plus q are factors of 105 P minus Q is of course going to be lower than P plus Q. P minus Q is of course going to be lower than P plus Q. So for P my so if I list out 105 as pairs of factors, if I list out 105 as pairs of factors, can you see P minus Q can take on a value of 
1 and p plus q can take on a value of 105. Now 2p is equal to 106 or p is equal to 53 and q is equal to 52. So one acceptable pair of p and q we have identified. In the same vein, for p minus q, one more example I'll do, p minus q is equal to 3 and p plus q is equal to 35 gets us to 2p is 38 or p is 19 and q is 16. One more case has been identified. But take a step back, take a step back. The question did not ask me what are the pairs. It is simply saying number of is as soon as I have broken it down, as soon as I have broken it down into four pairs, can I directly say K of 105 is 4. As soon as I have broken down into, uh, in how many ways can you write down 105 as product of two factors? That is the answer to the question. You don't really have to break down and come up with solution sets, acceptable solution sets in every iteration. Okay. See, if the difference of two perfect squares is given to us as uh, an odd number, uh, in how many ways uh, can it be represented? It is simply total number of factors of the odd number divided by two. These are the end result, end uh, insights that you take away. But here, when we are doing it for the first time, hopefully we are doing it in a manner that we understand these small little nuances. Okay. For 105, we have done our work. Now, let us do the work for 216. Again, we will do it in a manner. We will do it in a manner that we are. I'm expecting you to not have done this earlier. So I've got P minus Q into P plus Q is equal to 216. Again, just like 105, I will write down 216 as pairs of two factors. 1 into 216, 2 into 108. 3 into 72, 4 into 54, 6 into 36, 8 into 27, 9 into 24, 10, 12 into 18. And I think this is it. This is all the ways in which 216 can be represented as product of two numbers. Now, the challenge is, remember, if this is even, this had to be even. And if this is odd, this had to be odd. See, otherwise, what would happen? Let's say we pick up the first case, case itself. If P minus Q is 1 and P plus Q is 2, 1, 6, this will give us 2p is equal to 217. This can't be right because p will now turn out to be 108.5. Perfect squares are squares of natural numbers or squares of integers. So we can't really have mm, that uh, integer being 108.5. So this is an unacceptable case. So which cases among the list? are acceptable, which cases among the list, either both are even or both are odd. I have odd even here, so this is not an acceptable case. 2 into 108 is acceptable, both are even. 3 into 72, not acceptable, because 1 is odd, 1 is even. 4 into 54, acceptable. 6 into 36, acceptable. 8 into 27, not acceptable. 9 into 24, not acceptable. 12 into 18, acceptable. So we get a total of 4 acceptable cases. But now, if the working had to be done this way every time, where you had to write down all the pairs and then identify, it would turn amazingly challenging. It would turn amazingly challenging. And this is where the bifurcation happens. See, if it is odd, it is simply total number of factors divided by 2, those many ways. If it is odd, total number of factors divided by 2, it works. But here, where it is even, as it is in the last case as well, as it is even, as it is in the last case as well. See, we know that we cannot possibly get an odd into odd pair here. We will definitely get an even into even pair. We will definitely get an even into even pair. 
So you presumptively do what? You take two and two, four away from it. Instead of 216, work with 216. Instead of 216, work with 54. Now, in how many ways can you write 54 as product of two numbers? 1 into 54. 1 into 54. 2 into 27. 3 into 18. And 6 into 9. Can you see? For each of these four pairs, you will have a case. Because the 2 and 2, the 2 and 2 that you have taken away, give back that 2. You will find it again, or sorry, I let us not write it that way. If I give two to each of these numbers, it will turn to two into one zero eight. This will turn to four into fifty four. This will turn to six into thirty six, and this will turn to twelve into eighteen. Getting to those precise pairings, getting to those precise pairings becomes easier. In fact, once I take the four away. I don't even need to list this down. I can simply find out number of factors of 54. This is 2 into 3 cubes. So number of factors here is 8. 8 by 2, 4. And our work has become as easy as it was when we were dealing with an odd number. Our work has become as easy as it, as it was when we were dealing with an odd number. Now, even when it is an even number, first thing you do is you divide it by 4. Then whatever number you get, you find out its total number of factors divided by 2. Those many ways are there by which the given number can be expressed as difference of two perfect squares. Let us see if that works out for 384. Final result for 384. And then we'll also check it via the more longer mechanism. P minus Q. Hopefully at this time, achha, before we move on, hopefully at this time you're also able to identify the answer to this question has to be D. The answer to this question has to be D. A is definitely not the maximum. B and C are identical. So the answer has to be D now. But, okay. P plus Q is 384. The new way we had learned was divide this by 4. Upon dividing this by 4, we will get 66. How can it be 66? If I divide this by 4, I will get 96. Okay. 96. Now, 96 is 2 raised to the power 5 into 3 raised to the power 1. So, total number of factors is 6 into 2. Whole thing divided by 2. I will have 6 ways available. Answer to this question is 6 ways. Now, this is the short way if you have understood everything that has gone on previously. But in case you haven't, Let us go through the pairing the way we did it earlier. 384, 1 into 384, 2 into 192, 3 into 128, 4 into 96, 6 into 64, 8 into 48. 12 into 32, 16 into 24, and this is it. This is all the factors that are, uh, this is all the number of ways in which 384 can be represented as product of two numbers. I have odd and even here, so would it work? I have even and even here, would work. Odd and even here, would not work? 4 and 96, would work. 6 and 64 would work, 8 and 48 would work, 12 and 32 would work, 16 and 24 would work. So I have six pairings identified. As we had done by the short way as well, it is just that you wouldn't need to generate all these pairs of factors. Hopefully we learned something on this question as well. Next one. The difference of any 40 digit number and its reverse is always divisible by. Okay. See, there is a technical way of doing this. There is a smart way of doing this. There's a technical way of doing this and there is a smart way of doing this. So, let's look at the technical way first. Can I say if it's a 40-digit number? If it's a 40-digit number, uh, a two-digit number goes from 10 raised power 1 to 10 square minus 1. 
So 40 digit number will go from 10 raised power 39 to 10 raised power 40 minus 1. The range of 40 digit numbers is this. Now, uh, difference of a 40 digit number and reverse is always divisible by. Can I say sum of this is more related to remainder's idea? Sum of digits gives me the remainder with 9. Sum of digits of a number gives me remainder with 9. So for any number, if I take that number and I take its reverse. So sorry, whether it's a 40 digit number, a 50 digit number, a two digit number, an eight digit number, doesn't matter. If I take a number and, it's, and I take its reverse, can you see some of the digits don't change? So remainder with nine doesn't change. If I find out the difference between them, the difference will always, always, always be divisible by nine. You can also do it for smaller numbers. Check for smaller numbers. Let's say you have 64 and 46. See, the difference is 80. Let's try it for a slightly larger number. 1, 3, 7, 6. 6, 7, 3, 1. 5, 4. Oops, <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> subtraction in reverse. 1, 3, 7, 6. So 11 minus 6 uh, gives me 5. 2 minus 7 also gives me 5. 6 minus 3 gives me 3. And 6 minus 1 gives me 5. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3, 18. You will always, always, always get difference of a number and its reverse will always be a multiple of 9. Will always be a multiple of 9. Now, now, sum of digits gives me remainder with 9. So if you take out the difference of a number and its reverse, if you take out the difference of a number and its reverse, the result you will get is always a multiple of nine. At this time, you can happily rule out option B is the answer. At this time, you can happily rule out B is the answer because 11 but not always by nine. No, no, it is always by nine. But the challenge remains, nine is always, nine is present in all the other three options. Then how do we proceed? Then we do this. This 198 is this 198 is uh, 9 into 11 into 2. 9 into 11 into 2. So, and this 99 is of course 9 into 11. So we have to check whether Mm -hmm. the result being divisible by 11 is compulsory or not, then we have to check whether the result being divisible by 2 is compulsory or not. One smart way of doing it is, let's take a few numbers, let's take a two, two 40 digit numbers and the simplest 40 digit numbers that you can potentially think of is 6 0, 0, 0 lots of zeros 1 lots of zeros or let's not even take yeah, lots of zeros, one, and the reverse of this will be one, zero, 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 lots of zeros, and six. These are two 40 digit numbers. These are two 40 digit numbers. Okay, now see, at this time, at this time, hopefully, at this time, hopefully, you can rule out, you can rule out, the result will not be divisible by 2. 11 minus 6 for the unit digit, 11 minus 6 will give me 5. Give it because I'm getting 5 there. Can I absolutely be certain? Can I absolutely be certain? The result is not divisible by 2. So option D is also gone. Now I get 5 here. Now I only get 5 here if borrowing happens. So 9 minus 0 gets me 9, 9, 9. All the way up until 9, where are we? 9 and 9. Just that this would have turned to 5. So 5 minus 1, 5 minus 1 gets me to 4. I will have lots of 4s. I will have 1, 4, lots of 9s, and then a 5. I will have 1, 4, lots of 9s, and then a 5. 
can you also see this is a 40 digit number this is a 40 digit number and this is also a 40 digit number this is also a 40 digit number can we figure out the remainder with 11 here most definitely plus minus plus minus so on and so forth we'll keep on going the digits at the odd place will be plus and the digits at the even place will be minus so this is minus, this is plus, this is minus, this is plus. Can you see the middle 38 nines? The middle 38 nines will cancel each other out. The middle 38 nines will cancel each other out. Finally, we are left with 5 minus 4 or the remainder with 11 is 1. So it is not necessarily divisible by 11. It is not necessarily divisible by 2. We can also rule out C here. We can reach answer is A. What is interesting or fun to note, what is interesting or fun to note is, see, sum of digits, sum of digits gives me remainder with 9. And then when you find out the difference of any two such numbers, if you find out difference of uh, a, a number and its reverse, it will always be divisible by 9. The inverse of that is, if you pick up a two-digit number, if you pick up, an even digit number, even digited number. If you pick up an even digited number and you add its reverse, not subtract, you add its reverse, the sum will be a multiple of 11. Again, we go back to our, well, we had 64 and you add 46 to it. See, what do you get? 0, 1 carried over, 110. Or if you had, let's say, 74 and 47, you'll get 1, 121. Let's try it for a larger set of numbers. Let's say uh, we had 1, 0, 1, 3, 6, 7. No? This is the last number we had said. So, 6, 7, 3, 1. This gives me 7. This gives me 0. This gives me 1 and this gives me 8. Now see, plus, minus, plus, minus. For an even digited number, even digited, 2 digits or 4 digits or 6 digits or 8 digits and its reverse. If you add them up, the result that you get is divisible by 11. The fact that we were finding difference here was a dead giveaway that 11 has no bearing on this question. But then again, this is something you discover in practice. If you know it beforehand, then this question would be a cakewalk. If you don't know it, then you, you can perhaps engage in this uh, funny business, a 40-digit number and a 40-digit number, and then work your way forward. The only potential problem with this is, let's say you end up taking a bad number here. Let's say you end up taking a bad number here, and the result that you get is also a multiple of 11 by that metric. Then it would be very sad. But what can you do? Life moves on. Next question. How many divisors of 21600 are divisible by 24 but not by 72? Okay. Let's see. 21600 can be broken down as 216 in 200. 216 is 2 cube into 3 cube. And 100 is 2 square into 5 square. Or Finally, I have 2 raised to the power 5 into 3 cube into 5 square. Now, 24 is 2 cube into 3. And 72 is 2 cube into 3 square. 2 cube into 3 square. Okay. When I'm creating a factor of this number, it will have some power of 2, it will have some power of 3, and it will have some power of 5. I need power of 3. I need at least 3 powers of 2. I need at least 3 powers of 2. Only then will it be divisible by 24. I need at least 1 power of 3. I need at least 1 power of 3. Then it will be a multiple of 24. It will be divisible by 24. I need 0 powers of 5 for it to be divisible by 24. 
Now, I wanted the number, the factor that I'm creating, the factor that I'm creating to be divisible by 24. But I don't want it to be divisible by 72. For a number not to be divisible by 72, I can either restrict the number of twos that are used, or I can restrict the number of threes that are used. For twos, we need, I have to restrict it under three twos. That is impossible. That is impossible. I cannot restrict it under three twos. But can I restrict it under two threes? Yes. By ensuring that I only use three raised to the power one in my factor creation, by ensuring that I only use 3 raised to the power 1 in my factor creation. I cannot use 3 raised to the power 0 because then it will not be divisible by 24. But ensuring that I only use 3 raised to the power 1 in my factor creation, I have now ensured that a number will not be divisible by 72. If the number will not be divisible by 72, now there is no restriction on power of 2. It can go anywhere from 3 to 5. And 5's power are anyway not restricted. It can go from anywhere from 0 to 2. So this 2 raised to power, 2's can be included in 3 ways, 3's can be included in 1 way, 5's can be included in 3 ways, or how many devices of 21600 are divisible by 24 but not by 72? There are 9 devices. Answer to this question is 9. Next question. N is equal to 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, blah, 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 blah. Hopefully you can identify the pattern. One is here one time, two is here two times, three is here three times, four is here four times, so on and so forth is a hundred digit number. Find the remainder when n is divided by 16. Now see, for remainder with 16, we need last four digits. For remainder with 16, we need last four digits. How do we identify last four digits? Let's work our magic. Let's do something. 100 digit number. The numbers are increasing in such a manner. See, uh, for one goes on one digit, two goes on till two digits, or cumulatively we have reached three digits. Three goes on for three digits, or cumulatively we have reached six digits. Four goes on for four digits, or cumulatively we have reached 10 digits. Can you see? 1, 3, 6, 10. This sum of first n natural number. So I have to identify n into n plus 1 by 2, which is sum of first n natural number, has to be greater than or equal to 100. Has to be greater than or equal to 100. So I get n into n plus 1 is greater than equal to 200 or the best case possible would be n is equal to 14 because 14 into 15 is 210 which is greater than equal to 200 which is to say which is to say people pay attention which is to say see up until 19 up until n equal to 30 13 into 14 by 2. Ah, I have made a mistake. I have made a mistake. No, 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 no. I have made a mistake. This is a terrible, terrible mistake. Because see what would happen. This breakdown is not as simple as I thought earlier. Because up until 9, up until 9, these are single digit numbers. Up until 9, these are single digit numbers. But 10 is a two-digit number. 11 is a two-digit number. 12 is a two-digit number. So I can't be doing n into n plus 1 by 2. I would have to check till 9. And then how many digits would be used up until now? 9 into 10 by 2. So 45 digits have been used up. Up until 9 times 9, 45 digits have been used up. The next phase have to be 10 times 10. 10 times 2 digits. So for 10, 20 more would be used up or we end up with 65 digits used up so far. Then for 11, 22 more, 11 would be repeated 11 times. So 22 more digits used up. So I will reach 22 more will get me to 87 and then 87. 
the 87th digit is going to be one the last one of uh, the last one of uh, 11 then i will have 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 89 91 93 95 97 99 and finally 100 the number the last 13 digits of the number are going to be this okay if the last 13 digits are going to be this these are going to be the last four digits so now i have to simply find out 2121 divided by 16 what remainder does it leave okay so it is 1 16 then 52 3 48 then 41 then 2 then 32 and we are left with 9 the answer to the question is 9 i'll expand upon my mistake all over again see well, the error that i had made was made was i was simply looking at sum of first n natural numbers where does it cross 100? But the problem is, see, when you have 9 times 9, one this series, when we are continuing, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, all the way up until 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 times 9 you've got. Now, after this, the numbers that will start coming will be two-digit numbers. So, 10 would have come 10 times. But how many digits does it use up? 5 times, 6 times, 7 times, 8 times, 9 times, and 10 times. It uses up 20 digits. Up until here, digits were being consumed at 1 at the rate of 1, but now digits are being consumed at the rate of 2. So you have to break down the work into two parts. Up until single digits exhaustion, we had 45 digits used up. Up until 9, we had 45 digits used up. Now for 10, coming 10 times, we'll have 20 more digits used up. So by now, 65 digits have been used up. After this, 11s would come. 11s would come 11 times. 11 uses two digits in one go. 11 uses two digits in one go. So 2 into 11, 22 more digits will be used up. So you'll reach 87 digits have been used up so far. Now last 13 digits are needed. Last 13 digits are needed. 12 will come 12 times. If the series is continued, 12 would become 12 times or so 24 digits will be used up. 87 plus 24 is greater than 100. So we don't really care. Even that we were only concerned with the last four digits, we, extend, we fill out the last 13 digits ourselves. And the last 13 digits also give us information about the last four digits, 2121. So 2121, then we divide with 16. 2121, we divide with 16, and we get to our answer as 9. Very interesting question. Hopefully, you learned something. Okay. Next. When a natural number n is divided by d, the remainder is 35. When 50n is divided by d, the remainder is 11. Find D. Okay. Let's see. N is equal to some multiple of D plus 35. Now, if I multiply N with 50, I have to also be multiplying the RHS with 50. So, 50 times KD plus 50 into 35. 50 into 35. But we are told remainder with T. This is as good as TD plus 11. Now I know this portion is divisible by D. But this portion, this portion correctly is not divisible by D. But how much remainder does it leave with D? It leaves a remainder of 11. See, diagrammatically what is happening is if N was something like this some jumps of D and you were left with 35. Now that I have taken, now that I have taken 50 times of N, this is N, these are jumps of D. Now that I have taken 50 times of N, it is a very large number. This is 50N. If we were to place it 
this way itself, can I say, I would have had 35s placed right at the end, 35 placed 50 times right at the end after the initial jumps of D, however many times. But previously, D could not make a further jump because D was larger than 35. D could not make a jump because D was larger than 35. But that may no longer be true. D can potentially make more jumps. And in fact, the question tells us it does make more jumps. And this time, it ends up 11 away from 50N. The remainder, when 50N is divided by D, the remainder is 11. Which is to say, out of this entire range, 35 into 50 is how much? 1750. Yes. Out of this 1750, when you leave aside the remaining 11, when you leave aside the final 11, which is the remainder, this portion is divisible by D. Out of 1750, when you take away 11 or 1739 is divisible by 3. Divisible by D. Now, 1739 is divisible by D. Now, this leads us to our new challenge. Find the value of D. The question, the statement says 1739 is divisible by D. It does not say D is 1739. So, our, the number, the value of D could be 1739 or a factor of 1739. Any factor of 1739. So we have to check whether 1739 is a prime number or not. So we have to check whether 1739 is a prime. If it is a prime number, then answer is 1739. If it is not a prime number, we have to check whether the other factor is greater than 35. So let's see. Uh, <clears throat> 1739 is divisible by D. Now, when you have to check whether a number is prime number or not, when you have to check whether a number is prime number or not, a wonderful way to check is see some perfect square greater than it. If you can see a perfect square greater than it or a perfect square around it. 1739, the closest perfect square that I'm sure everyone can see is 1600. The closest perfect square that you can see is 1600. This is 40 square. Now in order to move from 40 square to 41 square, you need to add a 40 and you need to add a 41. This is basic maths working. So you get to 1681. This is still not greater than 1739. Don't do. Moving forward. If I want to move from 41 square to 42 square, I need to add 41 and 42. I get to 1764. 42 square is 1764. If you know this square, 1764, great. If you don't know it, Still okay. 1764. Now see our number 1739. I can represent it as 1764 minus 25. 1739 is 1764 minus 25. Or 42 square minus 5 square. Or 47 into 47. Can you see 1739 is not a prime number? And this is quickly ascertained. This is reasonably quickly ascertained by finding out the perfect square that is just above 1739. Finding out the perfect square that is just above 1739 and then seeing the difference. But this is not like a universal method. This is a wonderful method when it comes to cat questions. This is a wonderful method when it comes to four digit numbers because here, they would not give you something as random as 87 into, not 87, 87 is a great number, 83 into, 83 into 71. They will not give you something as bad as that or something very weird. They'll give you a reasonably small number wherein factor finding is possible, wherein factor finding is possible. The alternate way to do it here is, of course, we know the square root is around 40-ish, around 40-ish. So we start checking prime numbers under 40. So we check 41, we then check 37. In that case also you can get to, if you check 37, you'll see 37 into 47. Yes, this is not a, a prime number. You'll find two numbers. And now, then you don't need to check the other numbers under it. 
but if you can check it it is nicer if you can check it is it is nicer the work becomes slightly more manageable and in fact in most questions most questions across the years that i've seen if it is a large number and you have to check whether it is prime or not the best way to do it is hunt for hunt for a perfect square just above it and then see the difference if the difference is a perfect square oh this is not a prime number if the difference is not a perfect square then you can't say anything invariably the difference is indeed a perfect square now coming back to our original question we knew 1739 is divisible by d so d is a factor of 1739 1739 has factors of 1 37 47 and 1739 now the value of d has to be such that it is greater than 35 the value of d is such that it has to be greater than 35 can it be 37 yes can it be 47 yes can it be 1379 yes so do we know a precise unique value of d no so the answer to the question has to be cannot be determined okay this question now if r is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 50, how many values of r are such that r minus 1 factorial is not divisible by r? Okay. This is, there are two ideas here. One, can you see that uh, 11, sorry, 10 factorial cannot be divisible by 11? And why 11? It is a random number. But the special property here with 11 is the fact that it is a prime number. If I take a prime number minus 1 factorial and I divide it by 11, 11 has not been introduced so far. So, of course, it is not divisible. But if we look at 12 factorial by 30, it is, of course, not introduced so far. So, can I say uh, acceptable values? of r okay looks too dirty of r we'll have all prime numbers we'll have all prime numbers but there is one extra unique value that you have to be aware of and that is p factorial is not divisible by 4 this is the only case, this is the only composite number case. This is the only composite number case. 4 is the only composite number where r minus 1 factorial is not divisible by r. This is very specific information, arcane piece of information. If you know it, great. If you don't know it, still okay. Now, if we have to solve for this question specifically, we have 4 and then we have to list out all the prime numbers. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, and finally 47. So I have 3 and 3 and 1, so 7, 3 and 3 and 1, so 7 and 2 more, so 16. Answer to this question should be 16. Next question. What is the remainder when 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4 up to the 300 digits is divided by 999? Okay. Now, all of us hopefully know the divisibility rule of 9. We do sum of digits. We do sum of digits. Divisibility rule of 9 is sum of digits. But uh, those of us who have studied appropriately would know divisibility rule of 99 is sum of digits taken two at a time. So let's say the number was 3764. Add this and add this up. How much do we get? 64 plus 37 is 101. 101 by 99 is 2. So this number upon division by 99 will leave a remainder 2. We can also check that 3764 divided by 99. 3 times 297. 16 minus 7 is 9. This is 4. And 36 minus is 794. 
So A, we get 792C. Remainder is 2. For 9, we know sum of digits taking one digit at a time. Rule for 99 is sum of digits taken two at a time, two, two digits. And hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. When we are asked to find out remainder with 999, when we are asked to find out remainder with 999, no problem at all. We have to take digits three at a time. We have to take digits three at a time. And the wonderful thing is the question also says 300 digits. So that is so nice. So I'm saying 242 will be the first three digits. Then 424 will be the next three digits. Then again 242. Then again 424. And when you make groups like this, you will get 100 such groups. But all these groups are not identical. 242 and 424 are not identical. But can you see, because we are using 300 digits and we are getting 100 such groups, we will get 50 of each type. There will be 50 groups of 242 each and there will be 50 groups of 424 each. So summation can be obtained as 50 times of 242 plus 424. This will be the summation of the numbers present. Summation of the digits taken three at a time. And this has to be eventually divided by 999. This has to be eventually divided by 999. If we add it up, we get 50 into 666 by 999. Now 666 into 50 is as good as 33300 three, three, zero, zero by 999. 33300 three, zero, zero, divided by 999. Now, very common error that people make while finding remainder is, oh, this 9 and 9 I can cancel. Don't cancel stuff. You're finding out remainder. There is no cancellation here. So now 33300 three, zero, zero, divided by 999. Hopefully, you can see. Mm. 333 three, three, into 0. Yes. So, if I do it, 33300 three, zero, zero, divided by 999. Nine, nine. If you cancel, there is a way you can get to the right answer, but I don't really recommend because getting back to the right answer, many people falter this, especially when questions are theta. People don't really remember what is to be done. So, you get three times here. 2997. We get 0, we get 3. 12 minus 9 is again 3. 12 minus 9 is again 3. So 3300. 0, 0. So we again get 3. So 2997. We'll get 333. The remainder obtained here will be 333. The remainder obtained here will be 333. Hopefully, that should also give you the reason. That should also give you a little bit of trigger. Remainder with 9 is sum of digits taken one at a time. Remainder with 99 is sum of digits taken two at a time. Remainder with 999 is remainder uh, sum of digits taken three at a time. Now, in the inverse way, go. Remainder with 11 is plus minus plus minus alternate for one digit each. For 101, the divisibility rule is two two digits paired up plus minus plus minus. And for 1001, 1001, the divisibility rule is three three digits paired up and then plus minus plus minus. And that is also the divisibility rule for 7 and 11 and 13 because they multiply to give us 1001. Hopefully, you know where the divisibility rule of 7, 11, and 13 is gen getting generated from. Okay. Next question. What is the remainder when 17 raised power 325 is divided by 109? Okay. This is a very simple application of a rule. The very simple application of a rule. See this. 109 is a prime number. 109 is a prime number. So a number raised to the power 
a prime number minus one divided by the same prime number. K and P have to be co-prime. Then the remainder is equal to one. This is what is known as some people call it Fermat rule, some people call it Fermat little rule, some people call it some rule. I don't know. I know this result. So see. 17 raised to the power 108 divided by 109. This will give me remainder 1. This will give me remainder 1. But I don't have 17 raised to the power 108. I have 17 raised to the power 25. So, I can write 17 raised to the power 108 raised to the power 3 into 17 by 109. And now see, 17 raised to the power 108 raised to the power 3. This will give me remainder 1. So I don't really have to care about this. I'm left with 17 divided by 109. So this will turn to 17 only. The remainder here is 17. Nothing more. Okay. Next. The digits x, y, and z of a three-digit natural number x, y, z satisfy the equation 169x plus 13y plus z is equal to 786. What is the sum of the digits of the three-digit natural number x, y, z in base 9? Okay. So remember, remember, x, y, z is currently a natural number. x, y, z is currently a natural number. We've got 169x plus 13y plus Z is equal to 786. Okay. Now see, 169x, this is divisible. 169 is divisible by 13. 13 is, of course, divisible by 13. So this portion here is divisible by 13. This portion here leaves a remainder of 6 upon division by 13. This portion here upon division by 13 leaves a remainder of 6, which would mean Z has to be a number that upon division by 13 leaves a remainder 6. It is also a natural number. It is a digit in the natural number. So 6 can only assume value, Z can only assume a value of 6. Z has to necessarily be 6, which makes our life easier and it reduces our work further. It becomes 169x plus 13y is equal to 780. Z has been identified as 6. We keep it. Now I can get 13. I can get rid of 13 everywhere. I have 13x plus y is equal to 60. 13x plus y is equal to 60. Again, see, this is divisible by 13. This is 13n plus 8. This is 13n plus 8. The only way it works is if y takes on a value of 8. So y is now 8. y is now 8. Now, if y is 8, you can see 13x will be equal to 52 or x is equal to 4. So the three-digit number x, y, z is equal to 486. 486. Now, finally, the question is what is the sum of the digits of the three digit natural number? Sum of the digits of the three digit natural number XYZ in base 9. Sum of the digits that we can currently reach is 4 plus 8 plus 6. It is 18. It is 18. Sadly, 18 is not present in the questions. Sadly, 18 is not present in the options. It is not present in the option because 18 is in base 10. It is in base 10. If I have to convert it to base 9, if I have to convert it to base 9, I would have to divide 18 by 9. I get 2 here. I get 0 here. Or the number in base 9 will be 2, 0. Or option B is the right answer here. That is all the 20 questions in this uh, sheet. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you understood some ideas and had fun. That will be all. Okay, have fun. This is 
week one numbers. Hopefully, we will continue in future. Depending upon the response we get, we will continue in future. So, like a typical YouTuber, I'll set a like goal. So, if we get, let's say, 100 likes on this video, next week, the next video comes out. Otherwise, the next video doesn't come out. I'm threatening. We'll see. Have fun. Go home. Okay, bye. Thank you.